Hello. Did okay. I didn't see the full thirty second countdown intro thing. No, we were just so eager. It just like I don't know what happened to it. Here we All are. Right. Well, we're trying to connect on um, Instagram. Okay. Uh, sent me. Oh, should... it disappeared. Hang on, where did it go? Did you send her a request? Yeah, it came up and then buzzed she off. She said it came up and then disappeared. <laughs> I need it again. I have to put my goggles on. Oh, that was quick. You're fast. Here comes another one. Da -da. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Facebook and YouTube people. We're trying to get Instagram connected. I it won't be a minute. Good morning. I, I, good morning. I often, good morning. I often wonder if people on YouTube and Facebook are like, what is wrong with those Instagram people? <laughs> it always takes five minutes. This big finger comes towards the screen as well. It's like really like <laughs> exactly. I've, ET I've coming else's, towards you. I have someone else's finger doing that. but uh, <laughs> It's such an invitation, but I don't know what happened. I don't know. Do it again and I'll hang on. Let me close it and I'll go back in. Come on, do it again. Let me see. It says... Someone on TikTok wants to, wants to talk to me, but no. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hang on. I pressed it. Go live. Okay. I think she Hello. Just, she you can just see hey. my head. Yay. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good Wait, morning. isn't it evening for you? It's evening, yeah. It's evening, um, yeah. We're getting an echo. Is your sound off? Is it me? Hang on. Da, da, da. <laughs> Um, we've we're getting an echo. My sound is all down here. You have to turn your microphone down. On the there you go. Any good? Just turn the sound. That's better. Off. That's, That's better. all better. Good. All better. Okay. <sighs> well, everyone, welcome Hello, back. Hello, Facebook world. This is this is our uh, a second try at this today. Uh, yeah. So my guest today is Emma Rutherford from uh, London. You might notice she has a little bit of an accent, sounds a little different from those of us over here. But for those of you, for those of you across the pond, she sounds perfectly normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't go that far. <laughs> I was pushing it a bit. How are so, you today? How, how are you? Great. What's going for on? Those don't know Emma. She is from the natural canine kitchen.com and she uh, is an industry consultant and does companion animal recipe development. And uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, she sent me a message and said, Hey, would you do a live with me? And I said, sure, Emma, I would do a live with you anytime. Ah. So, so this is, this is really her thing it's it's coming off of my platform but it's really her thing um and so we're going to talk about whatever she wants to talk about <laughs> you're just going to sit back and put your feet up and just listen <laughs> sure <laughs> is that what you fancy you, doing today <laughs> you, you could make it that easy that'd be awesome <laughs> um i just wanted to ask firstly before we get really really started how is everyone how is hugh how is nanny how are the the kids how are the animals what's happening Oh, what is happening? Well, we've had a little bit of fun lately because uh, our water started tasting funny to me. And I, I have these weird taste buds. Like if something is off, I'm, I'm totally all over you got it. it. Yeah. And uh, so I said, you know what, I'm going to get this. I kept thinking that my water cup that I drink from at night was moldy. So I ran it through the dishwasher and it still tasted funny. Hey. And so I said, you know, what? I'm going to get our water tested. And it came back that our well had coliforms in it. So Ooh. yeah, not E. coli, but coliforms. So uh, from we had storms the, from having hell. storms. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we have had a lot, but and yeah. Gwen lives next door. So I had her well tested too. Cause I thought, well, you know, <laughs> they're pretty close together. Um, and hers came back fine and ours came back contaminated. So for the past 24 hours, we've had Clorox, uh, sitting uh, in our chlorine, sitting bleach, yeah. sitting in our well, yeah. and no water. So it's been really fun. But by tonight, we'll have water back, and it'll be clean water. <laughs> have you got ill from it? Or do you think you've got rough from it? I are you okay? I think so. And it's been no. tasting, tasting off to me for since before we went to Europe. So e okay, uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't think so. But it, it just kind of skeeves you out when you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so that's that's been what hugh has been up to for the past few days running around trying to figure out how to treat the well yeah wow we, we, we learned you're new a family with day. two wells <laughs> huh? you're a family with two wells 
Well, Gwen lives next to we're basically our cool. properties can join, but right. so yeah, I could have run down to her house to get water, but we just bought a bunch of bottled water. Yeah. Filled all the water troughs. <laughs> yeah. No, good. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is and something that I don't often see you talk about, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about it on here, is the fact that you do develop recipes commercially as well. And obviously, you're a vet. You are on the very, very niche, nat no, I would say no. natural tip. I mean, no. you know, that's, that's no. understood. But you do develop recipes. And I wanted to ask you um, about your process. And this is what you got talking, then I'll do the rest if you want. Um, but this is just, you know, what's your process? Where do you go? You know, where in your head do you go when, when somebody comes to you and says, can you create a recipe? For my brand where do you go with it do you do you, do you go off into ethereal land and go I'm going to put this in it and this in it and this in it or do you I mean I'm a bit more like what's your budget so <laughs> who are we selling uh, to what are we doing you know <laughs> I actually have been asked by many companies to uh -huh. formulate yeah and uh most of them unfortunately want to make a dry kibble and I know how to formulate that I'm not yep going to formulate that yeah um and i up until i wanted to get my own stuff out there i mm -hmm. did not formulate for any companies at all so mm. every time i was asked i was like nope that's not that's not yeah. my thing i don't like i'll do personal recipes for people yeah um so i do that a lot um yeah. you know and the recipes that we put on our website and then in my books and that sort of thing um but Pup loaf, which was my original recipe that I made, yeah. that, you know, is now I see pictures of pup loaf being made all over the world. So it's you are of queen of the pup loaf. Now, queen I, of the pup loaf. Can I just um, can we just address this that you are queen of the pup loaf? Now I made a pup loaf. Of course I made a pup loaf. You know I'm not going to claim it was all all my own or owner ideas, but I made a pup loaf back in the day, and I think I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, I think. Maybe you and I at points weren't always, you know, the most popular kids in the playground because we didn't mind if you wanted to cook. We <laughs> said it was OK. You know, whatever your budget allowed or whatever journey you were, you know, stage in your journey and things like that. And I think that is the thing, you know, I'm bigging myself up here with you, along with you and saying that we were probably back in the day the people that said it's okay to cook something you're not going to kill your dog and it's not going to be you know if, if you cooked food and it depleted every nutrient in the world then we wouldn't be alive either would we so exactly. we'd all be dead <laughs> crazy crazy and i absolutely have 100 percent respect for you to for bringing out the books keep going on it and stand in your ground and now it's being made by is it is by it all provide. All provide yeah yeah and, and so Amazing. that that was the first um jump into commercial formulation so yeah. so many people have been making pup loaf but there's so mm -hmm. many people who don't cook don't know how to cook don't like to cook yeah. and pup loaf depending on how you make it but it can be pretty smelly because yep. it's got organ meats in it yeah. Um, and I do tell people, put your sardines in at the end after you cook it and mix it in. So then it, but, but, you know, if you yeah. mix those in during the cooking process, like it can smell up your house. It can be a bit much. Yeah. It Especially if you're vegan much. or vegetarian you, yourself. Oh, it, for sure. Like, mm, yeah. So people kept saying, well, you know, can you, like when I had my clinic in New Jersey, people were like, I'll pay you. You can make it in your kitchen, bring it to the office. I'll buy it from you. I'm like, you, you think I have time to make hundreds of pounds of pup loaf? I, I do not. Um, so after being asked yeah. for, for so many years by people, you know, cause there's somewhere we can buy this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually had a lot of clients who, um, had started using it for their dogs and then they uh -huh. were talking to their neighbors who didn't cook and they'd say, well, I'll make it for you. So I actually had a lot of clients who were making like kind of big batches to yeah. share with friends and neighbors and family. I love um, that. Love so that. I've always had a good, and we're talking this years back, right? We're not just yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah, Three or no, five years ago. We're this talking, is, I mean, you know. Like 10, 11 years. We look, um, we look amazing. Just want to say, I'm going to say this. We look amazing <laughs> for our ages. We do. We're absolutely, we look absolutely brilliant. And um, I, we've been doing this a long time. You've been doing it for years. And I think, yeah, I think that's amazing that they've been doing it for so many years. And now you've gone, actually, you can buy it. It's ready yeah. made. Right. Yeah. Same recipe. Same yep. recipe. Well, yep. it's it's ninety nine percent the same recipe. Yeah. We had to make a few little tweaks to you know, uh -huh. make ten thousand pounds at a time versus. Yeah. Um, so 
you know, sometimes there are ingredients, um, and it was really interesting. I had this conversation with them yesterday. Like, uh, I then I wanted to come out with my constitutions line, yeah. which is based on traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. And, and so this I had is a first. This is a first. Yeah. So I had this parsley first, yeah. in one of the recipes, and so Dennis, the owner of All Provide, said, "Well, I can't do parsley because when we buy it, it comes in little bunches with those little metal twist ties holding the bunches together." That would be too labor intensive to take the yeah. little twist ties off and God yeah. forbid a twist tie would fall, you know, get mixed in the food. Then we, you know, be on social media with people saying, oh my gosh, look what we found in our pup loaf. Yeah. Uh, so we found, we had to find workarounds for some things. So yeah. sometimes when you're doing things on a very large scale, you have yeah. to make changes. Um, but what I have found in formulating, whether I'm formulating for one person or formulating mm -hmm. in large batches, mm -hmm. is that for commercial production, we mm -hmm. have to conform to AFCO or FEDIAF yeah. guidelines. I yeah. like FEDIAF better than AFCO. Thank you. Um, yes. Well, I, I like to, my tagline is FEDIAF and beyond. <laughs> yes. You know, like Buzz Lightyear, because we're going, be, because, you know, let's face it, we're going beyond. We're we are because in those they give you the rules. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not formulating something with 18% protein. That's yeah. Yeah. No. Like, I mean, I, Nino, I, we're, I going, we're, we're saying what box? Not think outside the box. We're just saying what box? Yeah. There is no box. We have, we have to be able to be true to who we are, but also in a commercial sense, you have to be sensible and you have to stay within budget restrictions and those boundaries that are set to, to say, yes, it's balanced and complete. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. yeah, there were there were a few things that I originally put in the constitutions and then Dennis went and looked up pricing on some of those things and he said, is there something else we could use instead? <laughs> I was like, oh, let me go back and rework that. Yeah, oysters and some dried tomatoes I usually get. You really put them in there, do you? Mm, I don't know. Can we put a supplement in critters? I wanted to say as well, um, we are the only people, I did a big, I mean, if anyone wants to correct me, I could be wrong and I'm happy to be corrected, but I did a little um, survey about three months ago, two, three months ago, and it turns out that you and I, you are the only person in the US, as far as I can tell, that has formulated within the guidelines and everything, a cooked food that doesn't have additives. <laughs> did you know that i, I, did, I did not know that and yeah so I, and why though judy what i mean i've 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 done it in thailand i've done one in germany and i've done one for company in canada nothing in america yet but for, for a cooked food so you are the only person that has create been able to create a cooked pet food without additives i, I just want that to sink in for everybody because if you go and look there's a lot of great foods out there but if you look in them and you look on the back and then there will be an additives panel. Why? It's, as you and I both know, it's so not necessary to do. Why are they doing that? We can do it. Why are they doing it? It's easier. But I actually did talk to um, uh, the folks at Dr. Harvey's. They have a lot uh -huh. of foods. And so when yeah. they originally came out with Paradigm, they had, yeah. so that was actually when I hooked up with them. They came out with Paradigm yeah. and sent some to me because they knew I was a holistic vet in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So, um, And they said we formulated this to be more toward keto. It doesn't have the starches in it. Uh -huh. And so when they sent it to me, I used it and tried it with my dogs. And I said, well, this is pretty cool. And I like most of the ingredients, but you've got this vitamin mineral mix in here. Why do we have this vitamin mineral mix in here? And she said, and I said, can't you formulate that without that in there? Yeah. Yeah. And she said, we could, but the veterinarians said, where's all the vitamins and minerals? And they wanted to see that in there. So they did come out with raw vibrance a little while later, which is all whole foods and doesn't have any vitamins and minerals added in. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't think that one is quite as low starch, um, for the keto aspect, but, mm -hmm. uh, but that was a, that was sort of eye opening to me that, you know, people would take that to their veterinarian and say, mm -hmm. I want to feed this. And the veterinarians would say, can't be balanced. It doesn't have all the vitamins and minerals listed. Yeah, it's it's interesting actually. It's, it's, I mean, uh, well, I think it's I think it's quite interesting how the whole thing's going in the raw world as well. I'm seeing a lot more. You know, there's um, you know, 
there's there's different things you know there's hpp and there's different routes people are having to go down and there is um you know there's quite a lot of raws coming out all over the place with a premix in them to make things easier so there's no bone it's just a supplement and they're supplementing d and e and all the rest of it and it's a real shame because when where does where does the line stop when you say is it well, it's really just you know meat and veg with premix in it even even raw but it seems to be so acceptable in the cooked world or the lightly cooked or whatever you're going to say to add this this premix in or vip pack or whatever you're going to call it and i'm just you know in a bioavailable source of calcium you know instead of just some eggshells or whatever they're going to put in um the other question i was going to ask is so why do we i mean i know and but i just would like our audience to sort of know a bit more about it why do we formulate certain recipes to meet those guidelines why do we do it because we we kind of have to don't we we, we have bound to. to yeah we have to as a matter of fact somebody um i, I don't know this person but sent me an mm -hmm. email and uh -huh. told me that i immediately had to pull my formulation off the market because it was not complete and balanced according to afco standards and i said well, how's that i don't know what <laughs> Okay. And so I said, what recipe are you using? Mm -hmm. And how how are you figuring out whether or not it's complete and balanced? And she was mm -hmm. using um, like a USDA or human nutrition software and was using a recipe that was not my commercial recipe. And I said, well, you're wrong on a I don't use that software and no. I, th that's not the recipe. So yeah. you can kind of get off my back now, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah but <laughs> I thought, man, oh man, like who has the time? I think, yeah. I, I mean, mean I think is, it, is this somebody who's a big enough enemy? Like they're going to sit around and run everything do. I oh, ever say through I've, a calculator? Yeah. yeah. I've had this happen to me. <laughs> I've had this happened to me and they've sent me anyway. I need not balance to need it. And I've said, uh, actually, and I wrote about it recently. Um, for, for, you know, the process of when you're working with a brand is, you know, you're looking at what, do, you know, what kind of products do they need? Who are we selling to? Who would be buying these products? Who would it, you know, benefit? Who would it make a difference to? The budget. You've got to go through all sorts of things. And you get to a stage where you um, are going to, you're going to listen, you're going to create the recipe. And then you're going to go to test kitchen. You're going to make it in the kitchen, see if your own dogs will eat it. And then you go to manufacture. Does it work? Is something too expensive? Then you might go to analysis and come back. You can't. I I love the empowerment of you know ADF animal diet formulator and these type of things that are on the commercial side. So you've got to have if you're going to be doing something like that, you need the commercial side of these things. Um, you can't be doing just professional. You need two thousand plus or I've got so like you probably got the same like nine and a half thousand ingredients just from analysis because when you work in the industry you get that analysis and you use it real, real analysis and you know you should be using typical analysis which is an amalgamation of different analyses that are the ingredients you're not we're not just using what is the one they use in Germany hang on I've got it written down there so in Germany they use the Oh, what is it called? McCants and something, and obviously the USDA um, data. That's just that's and they've they've, they haven't even got taurine in it. Where are you going to formulate from that? You know, this you can for home use. You can definitely do it on a commercial basis. You cannot look at a recipe and just say it hasn't got anything in it, everything in it, because you don't know the process. Right. And the other thing is, I had this this young vet who looked at, I was working for a brand and she looked at my formulations and said to the company that I didn't know what I was doing. They weren't balanced. <laughs> and they came to me and said, she said they're not because she's a vet. I'm not a vet, I'm, you know, and she had got it so backwards because she just used USDA data. Well, I'm not using that. We are, you and I are not just going to sit there and get USDA data and go, oh yeah, yeah, that's the nutritional value of some beef. We don't know what beef we're talking it's, about. Exactly. And, and you know, and that's, that. they say that, first of all, in testing that was done, something like 94% of canned foods do not, that were tested, analyzed after production, did yeah. not meet AFCO standards. And 69% of dry kibble products did not mm -hmm. 
meet AFCO standards. Yeah. And part of the problem is, yes, the the computer program that you're using might say that the beef yeah. has this percentage of fat, this percentage of each one of the amino acids, this percentage yeah. of all the vitamins and minerals. However, are we talking about confinement raised beef? Are we talking about pasture raised beef? Are we talking about pasture raised grain finished? Are we talking about a cow that was on soil that was depleted, a cow that's on a very rich pasture? Like what you time of the year? What you can go you? To the, exactly <laughs> go to the grocery store, yeah. get two packages of hamburger. If you really want to spend a lot of money, send them off for analysis. They're not going to come mm. back the same. No. So it's a it's a crapshoot and it's a best guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no it really what. is. Yeah. So <laughs> so analysis, I would say, is, you know, like your mop for so your, you know, your um an analytical constituents, which aren't really a lot. What are they protein, fat, and a ash or you know, some bits and pieces? Uh, they're like 12 to 1500 quid here so you know same sort of price in 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 dollars it's not that much different and it costs about another 130 it depends where you go what lab 130 150 pounds to sorry quid is a pound if anyone doesn't know what i'm saying so 150 quid pound um you know to add taurine or the calcium phosphorus they don't we're just seeing very small small you know, snapshots really of what's in them. So we don't really know what's happening. So I do really urge you if you're going to buy something that is commercially made to have a really trustworthy source of, um, you know, knowing what the ingredients are. If you don't know about it,